doing today? I'm beautiful. I'm wonderful. I'm well. I'm so happy I just get to be in your presence today. You too. You too. You're nothing but light. <laughs> Look, I got to talk about the costumes because you know how to wear a suit. Mm. And I love that it's a period piece. So can you talk about, you know, becoming Bayard and like really living within that time piece as well? We have the most incredible costume designer, Tony Leslie James. And Tony Leslie James and I, we worked together a few times before in the theater on Scottsboro Boys and also on my solo show, Boy and a Soul. So the beautiful thing is that Tony Leslie James knows my body <laughs> and she knows period like no one else. And it's that additional thing that you get when you're building a character because at first it's just me and the words and direction and working out the beats of the of the human being but then you get a suit it makes you feel different it makes you sit differently mm -hmm. i think that it makes you use your hands a little differently so i know that my physicality changed with my costume as well you know i do a lot of work you know i come from the theater and we i really I build a full character i build the way he sounds the way he moves his hands the way he may have a tick in some way or use his, the way he speaks. You know, I, I do all of that to make sure that I distill him down to a very real person and invest, you know, my part of my soul as well in it. So that's what I think animates and makes you right. feel like a different human being, but something that's very deep and close to you at the same time. I love that. Mm -hmm. But I like also too becoming him. You changed your voice. Yeah. You know, watch I was like, hold on, y'all. It's more about the performance, but it's like the little things like the voice that you have as well. Yeah. So can you talk about like sure. changing, you know, your octave? It's funny because most people when they meet me, they realize I don't sound like any of my characters. They're like, Oh, with Ali, your voice is deeper, or you wouldn't sound here. It's it's a, well, because it's all it's a lot of thought that goes into every single thing. And then for me, the joy is to make it seem like magic, like you don't see it anymore. I just want you to see the person. I want to recede while that character comes alive. So for me, it was like looking at documentary footage of Rustin, mm -hmm. and he speaks like three octaves higher than I do. And he's got a reedier, thinner voice. I have a lot of resin in my voice, but I wanted to extract that and take that away and, and take it up a bit higher to be a bit more like Bayard Rustin. <laughs> and also, I would also do things because he had a mid-Atlantic standard accent that he sort of created himself. It's very much like Catherine Hepburn. So I wanted to make sure that he he had some lilts in, in a way. And when he used it, he used it um, to make a point at times. Mm -hmm. When I, In different rooms, you would hear a little bit more of it and the, he would soften it at times. And at times I wanted to sort of go away when he was not, sort of when he was alone in those private moments where you're not, performative for anyone. What does that sound what does that sound like? You know, where, where does your voice live? And even physically, I think physically I wanted to make sure that even my body, I, I didn't I didn't train my body as I usually do and I'm, I'm so worked out because he was a, a man of the nineteen sixties. He didn't he wasn't at Equinox. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to transform my body as well to make it softer as well. All that goes into building a character. This is work that maybe no one else you will know or feel but you don't know exactly all the detail that goes into it. I prepared for at least six months to play Bayard Rustin, and I wanted to make sure every detail was examined and re-examined, and then hopefully there's a sleight of hand and a little bit of a magic trick that happens where once all the elements are, are added to you, that it animates this whole different person. I love that. Mm -hmm. But I Thank like you. that, you know, he feels like, you know that uncle that you had that always like gave you words of wisdom or helped mm -hmm. you get your life together when you was falling off? <laughs> I think I'm becoming that uncle. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love in those conversations, he's like, own your power. Yeah. And I want to know after, you know, portraying this character who has changed the world, hmm. you know, just with his mere thoughts of the impossible, like how have you learned to own your power after finishing this film? Well, oh, first of all, thank you for that. I think I'm... I'm learning to own my power more mm. and the power of how unique my experience is or my background is or my roots and where I've come from, that all of that is powerful, actually. That's, um, that's something I started to learn maybe in my 30s, to be very honest, to not, not to be embarrassed by cer certain things, whether it was mm -hmm. shortcomings or things that I didn't feel I was. Mm -hmm. I remember even just being in this body, being very thin. I used to cover it up and wear lots of baggy clothes. And then, yeah, I just didn't think I was attractive and things like this. And then at some point, you have to make some peace with what you've been given. And you have to make it beautiful. And you have to, and that's also part of owning your power. Own exactly who you are, what you were born with, um, your background, your, your family. All that stuff is actually fuel. But it takes a while. It takes a while. But at, at 53, almost 54 years old, I think I'm now in the 
someone told me, for a long time you're in your storytelling season and then you move into your truth telling season. Mm. And truth telling truly is owning your power. And I think I'm getting there. I think that, you know, there's no time especially now in our world, there's no time to just tell a story. Okay. You've got to be honest and sincere about what you believe, what you feel. And 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 that is the, and if it's done with love, that's your North Star and it'll be received as such. I love that. I'm so happy because, honey, I just think you're so beautiful and I love how you dress. So thank I'm just you. so happy that you found that. Thank I just you. want to thank you for taking time out of your day mm -hmm. to speak with me. And you're I'm just welcome. sending so much love and light your way. I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, my I love. I hope y'all have a great day, too. Uh, you are nothing <laughs> but light. You. you really are. Uh, how are you doing today? I am very good. How are you? I'm doing good. I enjoyed this movie. And you know what? Um, I wanted to ask a question because there is a lot of reads that Bayer has in this film. And I was like, I know George got something to do with this. So can you talk about those charismatic moments that he has? Um, especially, I think, the moment when he's talking to his employer and is like has to leave before he says something he regrets. Can you talk about that moment? Uh, well, we've all had those moments. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've all said, let me leave the room before I say what's on my mind. And so, and... Um, it, it was it was very it, it it was very interesting. I remember filming that and uh and, and I remember the first couple of times Coleman did it, it he he that exit line, he did it in a very explosive way. And and I was you know, and I was just I was just said find you're wanting to explode, but find the calmest mm. way you can do it so that the impulse of exploding is underneath it. Because if if people gave themselves permission to explode all the time, they lose their minds. Mm -hmm. And so it was. It, I, I loved how Bayer could be going back and then turn it, and then walk out and leave leave the person who's been left in the dust to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. He leaves. He leaves with his wit and his dignity intact, and the other person has to recover. I love that, and especially afterwards. Like you know, I just left my job. I was like, yeah, you have to leave after saying something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But I also really appreciated the archival footage yes. of the march. I think yes. it was so important to see those moments as we're watching all of this Absolutely. unfold. So can you talk about the decision to include all of that in the film? Well, it's, it's very interesting because all that footage was in black and white. Mm -hmm. So we had to colorize it. And it was just very interesting. It was very interesting because I noticed all these, I noticed most of the men had on dark suits. And you realize they were coming from the South and that was their church suit. Yes, and they, did, you know, and and so it, so there was, so that was really fascinating. One of my favorite shots is there these these women, black women, getting off the buses, and they have these curlers in their hair, and it was just so wonderful because they're coming to a march, they're coming to D.C., and so they are going to look good, and it's just the the specificity of that, or in the hats and the pride and the the sense of celebration. Of, of who they are and where they're from and what they're connected to and why they're there. I love that with this character, he's a, I think most importantly, he's a teacher, yes, right? Ab absolutely. You know, you've inspired all these people, these idols that we have, these activists, you know, he's inspired some of their like core beliefs. Exactly. And I want you to talk about actually like just showcasing like this is like our dad, our uncle, like this is someone who is instilling legacy and memories into everyone. I think all of the, it's, it, I, I think that's true of, of almost all of the characters, Ella Baker. Is, is you know is it was who was connected to um, Du Bois and A. Philip Randolph and and it was just an incredible figure and a force and a commanding energy and and joined the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and she decided that those men were not interested in what she had to say because she was a woman so she did turned her focus to SNCC and just there are these people who all of them were were funny and smart and tough and and human and vulnerable and given to fits of anger and given to fits of joy. And I just wanted to celebrate their complexities and 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 present them as living, breathing human beings, not icons 
that have been turned into statues. That's good that some of them have, but more so, so that therefore we as human beings, when we see them, we can see ourselves mm. and see our possibilities in them. Look, I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak to me. I'm sending love and light your way. I hope you have a great day. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much.